will always be a next time, inshallah. So, Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmaduhu nusalli ala rasulihil kareem. Amma ba'd fa'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalam ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For the recollection of everybody, and uh, oh, I mean, to ye di nahi. I forgot to put on the put on the uh, video. So for uh, the recollection of everybody, and um, especially for for uh, bringing those who are for the first time, bringing them in line with what we have been discussing for the last uh, maybe 10, 12 halakas. Uh, uh, let me say the following things. Uh, we all know that Allah Ta'ala created us and he created us with a purpose. He sent us actually, not that we came on our own. There's nobody in the world who can say that I even prayed to Allah Ta'ala to send me to the world. Nobody. Allah Ta'ala wished, will, desired, and we find ourselves in the world. So if he sent us, he must have sent us with a purpose. And we are told by uh, the scholars and the scholars heard from other scholars and uh, it goes down to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, he sent us in simplistic terms with two broad objectives. One is meeting some obligations towards the creator. And the other is meeting some obligations towards fellow human beings. So he, led, he sent us with some obligations, basically. A bunch of obligations. This life is to meet obligations and to face tests and tribulations. The obligations towards Allah Ta'ala in terms of time requirement forms a smaller fraction in terms of time requirement. The obligations that he laid down towards our fellow human beings, because there are so many groups of fellow human beings in terms of time requirement that forms a uh, that uh, ha that claims a bulk of our time, that requires a bulk of our time. To meet obligation or obligations towards Allah, the driving force that we need is Iman. And to meet obligations towards our fellow human beings, we need Iman and Husni Akhlaq. We have talked at length in the past about Iman. Actually, we spend more than one halakha on Iman. Iman on what Iman means and then uh, the qualities of Allah, the various qualities of Allah. And even before that, you know, uh, not before that, but after that, we spent 17 plus four, four to summarize the 17 halakhas. We talked about Islam, a com complete code of life. And then we talked about so many aspects in terms of obligation towards Allah mostly, but not so much in terms of obligation, obligation towards fellow human beings. So we talked about Iman, we talked about the obligations towards Allah, but we haven't so much talked about obligations towards fellow human beings and Husni Akhlaq. So when I started talking about what lessons we can learn from uh, history of Muslims, Muslim history. Uh, since we already talked about Iman and obligations towards Allah, I wanted to talk about Husni Akhlaq and obligations towards fellow human beings, not only so that we know about these because we haven't discussed about these, not that we do not know any of them, but I'm sure we didn't know many of them. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I went over at least 500 hadith, hadith traditions. From those I uh, presented before you, 225, which is about 45% of the 500, presented before you. And then 
uh, I thought it would be difficult to remember 225, impossible. So I, I uh, tried to lay down some principles, keeping those 225 uh, traditions in mind, laid down some principles. And then I thought, okay, why not I, from the 225, pick to me the, the more important traditions. And I presented in the last halka in a watered down form without referring to the first source and without uh, using the term Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Rasulullah Sallallahu said, and so on and so forth. And uh, there were 84 of them. So which is 37% uh, of the 225 ahadith traditions. So today, I, um, as I mentioned in my announcement, I want to talk about some verses from the Holy Quran uh, in terms of what Allah Ta'ala has to say about the obligations that we owe to fellow human beings. And husni akhlaq basically, uh, superior conduct, beautiful character, manners. And then uh, the second part of that would be a listing of 75 ayat, but without going into the details of the ayat, simply the parts that talk about superior conduct or how should we conduct ourselves with fellow human beings. So firstly, ayat, some ayat, full ayat, more or less, and then a list of uh, superior conduct, what Allah Ta'ala tells us about superior conduct. And when I talk about those, please keep in mind that those are not mere suggestions from the Creator. When Allah Ta'ala says that we have to do something, that becomes obligatory for us. Those are not suggestions, like a friend suggesting that you do this. No. But Allah Ta'ala has given us the option to follow His commandments or not to follow his commandments. And this to me is a surprising aspect and I'm sure it would be a surprising aspect to you that anything and everything that Allah Ta'ala has created and there are huge celestial objects, heavenly bodies that he has created that cannot deviate from his ordained path by a fraction of an inch. And he has created living beings like angels who cannot disobey him. And he has created other living being, beings and animals that cannot disobey him. He's such an overpowering entity that none of these have any uh, ability to deviate from what he wants. And within that, framework. He has given to human beings and jinn the limited option, I would say, limited free will to obey him or not to obey him. Once Ali radiallahu anhu was asked, how much of free will do we have? And he said, okay, you stand up. He told that person, stand up. He stood up. And then he said, raise one of your foot. So he raised one of his feet. And then Ali Rezzyallahu Anhu said, raise the other foot. And the person said, I cannot raise the other foot. If I raise one foot, I cannot raise the other foot. And then Ali Rezzyallahu Anhu remarked that this is the limited free will that Allah Ta'ala has given us. So we had the uh, option to obey him or not to obey him but the consequence will be ours. If we obey him, the consequence thereof, and if we disobey him, the consequence thereof will be ours. So uh, please keep that in mind when we come to that. But before I go on to uh, the traditions, uh, sorry, uh, verses from the Quran on superior conduct, Husni Akhlaq, the first part actually, as I mentioned in my announcement is, I want to go over some 
additional traditions that I thought of, that I had with me for at least 20, 30 years, and uh, plus a few additional. So this one actually, uh, in this one, and, and, and let me pull up the file. In this one, uh, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid mentions that uh, once we were with Rasulullah and the Bedouin comes and asks him, uh, oh Muhammad I want to ask you some questions that has to do with dunya and akhirah. That has to do with dunya and akhirah. And he asks 25 questions. And with my limited knowledge, I can assure you, I may be wrong and may Allah forgive me if I'm wrong, that this was Jibrail alayhi salam. And if you go, if you listen to the type of question, questions he asks, uh, a Bedouin could not have asked that, asked those questions, 25 of them. And I wanted to present merely five or seven of them, but I just could not help myself from presenting. Uh, finally, it came to, finally it came to uh, 17 out of the 25, and they they are really uh, awesome, I would say. So it could not have been. This is my conjecture. Allah, may Allah forgive me. It could not have been uh, uh, Jibrail, uh, other than Jibrail alayhi salam. And 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 we know that uh, uh, in other. Uh, other cases, Rasulullah mentioned that was Jibrail who came to teach you your deen. So this is from Khalid bin Walid. Out of the 25, I have 17 below. Uh, Bedouin, I want to be the richest man in the world. Everybody wants to be the richest man in the world, more or less. Rasulullah said, be contented. Kanat. Shantushti. And you will be the richest man in the world. And, and once again, you know, I have so much to cover. I, I don't want to uh, speak uh, uh, extra words to explain any one of them. They are by, by, by and large, very straightforward. And you are all intelligent people. And I, I just don't have to spend that time so I can cover as much as I want to cover. Then the Bedouin says, uh, I would like to be the most just man, most just man. Possibly not everybody wants to be the most just man. Desire for others what you desire for yourself. We heard traditions with respect to this. And you will be the most just of men. I like to be the best of men. We possibly want to be the best of men, if not the most just man. Do good to others and you will be the best of men. I would like to complete my faith. If you have good manners, you will complete your faith. Husni akhlaq. I would like to be raised on the day of judgment in the light with nur. Don't wrong yourself or any other creature and you will be raised on the day of judgment with nur. I would like Allah to bestow his mercy on me. If you have mercy on yourself and on others, Allah will grant you mercy on the day of judgment. And this one is not new to us. I would like to be the most honorable of men. If you do not complain to any fellow creature, you will be the most honorable of men. Actually, you know, this uh, uh, collection came to my mind because of this particular point. So I said, okay, let me include that. But then in including that, when, when I went over all of those, I said, no, I should include more, maybe seven. And then it came down to 17. But this is the one that uh, uh, guided me to this uh, uh, one tradition, actually. This is one tradition, which has 25 uh, questions. I would like to be the most honorable of men. And sometimes I want to complain. Now, why did this happen? Why did you do this to me? And then I think about this. If you do not complain to any fellow creature, you will be the most honorable of men. And think of it, we do not like those people who complain and complain and complain. 
I would like Allah to enlarge my provisions and everybody wants that. And we talked about this, but in other terms. What does Rasulullah say here? If you keep yourself pure, pure in wudu, that is what is meant, proper ghusl and bath in the proper manner. Uh, but then over and above that, whenever our, our wudu uh, goes away, we should make wudu. And that is what is meant in this one. If you keep yourself pure in wudu, Allah will enlarge your provisions. And in other tradition or traditions, uh, what, what, what are included are, or what are prescribed for enlarging provisions and also lengthening your life are two. Number one, behaving kindly to parents, meeting obligations towards them, and behaving kindly with relatives, meeting obligations towards them. Your provisions will be enlarged. Your life will be uh, lengthened. What that means, you know, we can talk. We could have talked about that, but as I said, I, I would refrain from uh, ex expanding on any one of them. I wish to be safe from Allah's wrath on the day of judgment, anger. If you do not lose your temper with any of your fellow creatures, you will be safe from the wrath of Allah on the day of judgment. We uh, referred to this earlier. I would like my prayers to be responded. If you avoid forbidden actions, your prayers will be responded. Avoid what Allah Ta'ala said, don't do. And therein lies, you know, taqwa. For his God. For his God, Amra Buli. Je namaz kalam pare, for his God. Kintu ashale for his ortholo, to keep away from the forbidden things. Odeke for his God. If you avoid forbidden actions, your prayers will be responded. I would like Allah not to disgrace me on the day of judgment. If you guard your chastity, Allah will not disgrace you on the day of judgment. I would like Allah to provide me with a covering protection on the day of judgment so that my sins are covered. Do not uncover your fellow creatures faults. And Allah will provide you with a covering protection on the day of judgment. One action if we can act on Jannah, inshallah. What will save me from sins? Tears, humility, namruta, and illness. Tears will bring forgiveness. Humility will make us commit less sins. Illness will bring for, uh, for will bring forgiveness of our sins. What are the best deeds in the eyes or esteem? The word eyes is used, but Allah doesn't have eyes like us. So I use the word esteem of Allah, best deeds in his esteem. Gentle manners, modesty, shalinota, and patience in adversity. What are the worst evils? in the esteem of Allah, hot temper and miserliness. What assuages, extinguishes the wrath of Allah in this life and in the hereafter? Concealed charity, gupto sadaka, and kindness to relatives. What extinguishes hell's fire on the day of judgment? Patience in adversity and misfortunes. These are the 17 out of the 25. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, Ibn Abba, uh, some additional uh, traditions that uh, I found uh, in, in the last week on uh, Husni Akhlaq. I didn't look for, for these so much. Now, there, would be, there are so many of them uh, beyond the 500 that I looked at. So I was not uh, looking for, but I just chanced to come across some additional ones which... Uh, I was tempted to uh, include. Ibn Abbas reported Rasulullah said, verily every religion has a character and the character of Islam is modesty. It's a very profound tradition. The character of Islam is modesty and we possibly most Muslims do not even consider modesty as a quality. Whereas in this tradition, Rasulullah is reported to have said, the character of Islam is modesty, haya, haya. 
And we feel that only women should have higher and uh, virgin women should have higher. Now Rasulullah says men and women should have higher. And uh, he, about him it is mentioned that he was like a virgin woman in terms of modesty. The best of Allah's creation was like a virgin woman in terms of modesty. Uh, people said, oh, messenger of Allah, is modesty part of the religion? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, rather, it is the entire religion. Then he said, verily, modesty, abstinence, reticence of the tongue, controlling the tongue, but not the heart, keeping the heart uh, th th throbbing uh, or thriving with the remembrance of Allah. And so reticence of the tongue and deeds are all part of faith. They bring gain in the hereafter and loss in the world. What is gained in the hereafter is much greater than what is missed in the world. What is gained in the hereafter is much greater than what is missed in the world. In seeking the hereafter, we miss some part of the world. The more we go after the world, the less we get of the hereafter because the less time we get to acquire possessions of the hereafter. Aisha anha, reported Rasulullah said, if modesty were to take the form of a man, he would be a righteous man. The example of a Muslim is that he is a modest person. If shamelessness were to take the form of a man, he would be a wicked man. Rasulullah uh, was asked, advise me. And he said, I advise you to be modest in front of Allah Almighty as you would be modest in front of a righteous man among your people. Rasulullah said, accept six deeds from me and I assure you your acceptance into paradise. When one of you speaks, let him not lie. When one of you promises, let him not break it. When one of you is trusted, let him not betray it. Lower your gaze, number four. Restrain your hands, number five, from harming others. And guard your chastity, six. Accept these, and I assure you your acceptance into paradise. All these will be posted, you know, it will be difficult uh, uh, to remember these. And I urge you, and I beg you, please look at these, download into your uh, computer, laptop, and look at these. If not once in a week, once in a fortnight. If not once in a fortnight, once in a month. Because these would help us to be superior human beings, Muslims, and help us to enable us to meet obligations towards fellow human beings, which is the bulk of Islam in terms of time requirement. Rasulullah said, verily, simple living is part of faith, austerity. He lived by it every moment of his life. Simple living is a part of faith. Simple living is a part of faith. So what I said so far, the gist of those, contentment, and that will make somebody the richest man in the world. Desire for others what you desire for yourself. One can be the most just man. Do good to others. Helpfulness will be the best of men. Good manners will complete faith. Don't wrong yourself or any other creature will be raised on the day of judgment with Noor. Have mercy on yourself and on others will get Allah's mercy. Do not complain to any fellow creature one will become the most honorable of men. Keep yourself pure. Your provisions will be enlarged. And as I mentioned in other traditions, kindness to parents is also mentioned and to uh, relatives to uh, enlarge provisions and to, to lengthen uh, life. Do not lose your temper with any of your fellow creatures. You'll be saved from the anger of Allah. Concealed charity and kindness to relatives will extinguish, also extinguish 
uh, the wrath of Allah. So two things are mentioned here. Uh, don't lose your temper with any of your fellow creatures and concealed charity. And the third is kindness to relatives. All these three to extinguish the wrath of Allah. Avoid forbidden actions. Prayers will be responded. Guard your chastity. You'll be saved from disgrace on the day of judgment. Do not uncover your fellow creatures' faults. You will receive a covering protection on the day of judgment. Your faults will be concealed. Tears, humility, and illness will save from sins. Gentle manners, modesty, and patience in adversity are the best of deeds. Uh, hot temper and miserliness are the worst of evils. Patience in adversity and misfortunes will extinguish hell's fire, hellfire. The character of Islam is modesty. Six deeds, do not lie, do not break promise, be trustworthy, lower your gaze, do not harm others, preserve chastity. And uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam assures entry into acceptance into Jannah. And the 20th one is simple living is part of faith. Overall gist, the basic, now this, is, this is something I'm, I'm presenting before you for the third time. To me, you know, when everything is uh, said and done up until this point, and we have covered uh, 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 about 230 traditions now, the, what, uh, what comes to my mind as being something that overarches everything, are these, these statements, treat people as we would love to be treated. Treat others as you would love to be treated. We love to be treated with justice, treat others with justice. We love to be treated with uh, truth, treat others or uh, speak truth. We, we do not like to be uh, deceived, don't deceive others and so on and so forth. Love for people what you love for yourselves. These are all related, behave well with your neighbor, with uh, your neighbors. Others should feel safe about your hands and tongue. All these form the crust of Husni Akhlaq. Love for people what you love for yourselves. Superior character involves that we join ties of kinship when others break ties, meet responsibilities when other person does not meet responsibilities to us, forgive others when others hurt us. And you know, in one tradition, it is mentioned that if you can do these three things, then you have husni akhlaq, and you can come to me on the day of judgment, I will give you the keys to Jannah Pushadros, these three qualities that I mentioned towards the end. So now the Quran on excellent conduct, uh, there are so many verses, and I, again, once again, you know, Neither can I uh, unearth all of them, nor can I present, nor do I have the time to present all of them. So some of them are presented here. Uh, but a long list is given uh, at the end. Uh, so uh, that will cover many more. And some of these. In Surah Fatir, Allah Ta'ala says in one verse, then we caused to inherit the book those we have chosen of our servants. So this is not a quality. This is mentioning that Muslims are chosen by Allah Ta'ala. We have a special responsibility, not only to him, but also to our fellow human beings for which we have to acquire Husni Akhlaq. And Allah Ta'ala says, do not even cast your eyes towards the worldly goods we have granted to different kinds of people. Don't look at worldly glitter, attractions we have granted to different kinds of people. Nor grieve over the state they are in, but in turn, but turn your loving attention to the believers instead. Look at their, uh, their qualities, look at their taqwa, look at their uh, obedience to Allah, and they are meeting responsibilities to fellow human, human beings. So pay loving attention to the believers, not to what the unbelievers got. 
and hasten to the forgiveness of your Lord and to a paradise as vast as the heavens and the earth prepared for the, uh, the, the, the Allah fearing who spend in the way of Allah. And we have more to say on spending in the way of Allah, both in plenty and hardship. So when we have enough, we spend, obviously. And when we are in hardship, even then we spend in the path of Allah. And then Allah Ta'ala mentions about those who restrain their anger and forgive others. Allah loves such good doers. And those who avoid the major sins and immoralities, and when they are angry, they forgive. And in Surah Luqman, Allah Ta'ala says, and do not turn your cheek in contempt toward people do not show contempt to people and do not walk through the earth exultantly, overjoyed. Indeed, Allah does not like everyone self-deluded and boastful and be moderate in your pace and lower your voice. Indeed, the most disagreeable of sounds is the voice of donkeys. The true servants of the merciful one are those who walk on the earth gently and when the, the foolish ones address them, they don't go to argue with them. What they say? They simply say, peace to you. Don't argue with the, uh, with the foolish ones. Ahammo ke shate torko korte jayona. And the retribution of an evil act is an evil one like it. So if you want to take revenge, somebody has done wrong to you, take revenge to an equal extent, not more, because then you will be held responsible if you overdo, if you overreact. But whoever pardons and makes reconciliation, his reward is from Allah. So uh, first of all, Allah says that you can take uh, somebody has wronged you, you can take uh, uh, equal measure of uh, retaliation, but not more. And then he says, whoever pardons and makes reconciliation, his reward is with Allah. And if two parties of believers fall into fighting, then make peace between them. The rest of the uh, ayah is not uh, quoted here. Make peace between people. The believers are but brothers. So make settlement between your brothers. Make peace between your brothers. Who obey their Lord and establish prayer. Who conduct their affairs by consultation. And spend out of what we have bestowed upon them. So again, spending. And we have more verses on spending. To conduct their affairs by consultation. And the previous one. Make peace, uh, make peace through settlement, reconciliation. And here, consultation, mashwara. And then Allah Ta'ala talks about spending. Oh Muhammad, you were lenient with them. And if you had been rude and harsh in heart, they would have disband, uh, this, they would have, um, I've made a mistake here, they would have disbanded away from you or they would have broken away from you. So pardon them and ask forgiveness for them. So pardoning is equality. Asking for forgiveness is equality and consult them in the matter. Once again, Allah Ta'ala is mentioning about consultation, mashwara to his prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Allah Ta'ala guides his prophet. Even then he tells his, his Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make mashwara with his sahaba so that they can learn and they can conduct their affairs through mashwara on a state level, on a societal level, on a family level, do mashwara. That is what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us. And when you have decided, then rely upon Allah Ta'ala. So Allah is asking Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to consult his sahaba and then make decision. 
uh, oh you who believe let not a group scoff at another group group it may be that the latter are better than the former nor defame one another nor insult one another by offensive nicknames and whoever does not repent then it is those who are the wrongdoers oh you who believe avoid much suspicions indeed some suspicions are sins and do not spy or backbite each other this that amounts to what is in blue backbiting amounts to what is in blue would one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother and fear allah indeed the most noble of you in the sight of allah is the most righteous of you the one who backbites is as if he has eaten the flesh of his dead brother and then allah taala says you you who believe oh you who believe uphold justice and bear witness to allah even if it is against yourselves bear witness even if it is against yourselves your parents or your close relatives and our, our our world is our life is our country is filled with nepotism if somebody is related to us the law doesn't apply to him if i have the power allah says uphold justice and bear witness to allah even if it is against yourselves your parents and your close relatives parents are not exempted whether the person is rich or poor allah can best take care of both refrain from following your own desires and when it is time for justice don't follow your desires i want to save my parents i want to save my relatives i want to save myself no so that you can act justly if you distort or neglect justice allah is fully aware of what you do you will you will face the consequence of that and your lord has decreed that you not worship except him and and to parents good treatment whether one or both of them reach old age while with you say not to them so much as uff the word is there in the quran do not say uff in out of out of disgust and do not repel them but speak to them a noble word and lower to them the wing of humility out of mercy and say rabbirhamhuma kama rabbayani saghira my lord have mercy upon them as they brought me up when i was small worship allah and do not associate with him anything and be good to parents oh sorry oh no this is a different one and be do good to parents and to kinsmen and orphans and the needy and the close neighbor and the distant neighbor and the companion at your side and the wayfarer traveler and those slaves who are owned by you surely allah does not like those who are arrogant and proud so he is uh, uh, making it clear for us to assume we have responsibilities indeed allah orders justice and good conduct and giving help to relatives and forbids immorality and bad conduct and oppression he admonishes you that perhaps you will be mindful and when you are greeted with a greeting greet in return with one better than it or at least return it in a like manner surely allah is the one who takes account of everything and then allah says and who give food however great may be their own need and desire for it so i have need and i have some food but i suppress my need i give to others that is what allah taala is mentioning here and who give food however great may be their own need and desire for it so they give food to the needy and the orphan and the captive saying we feed you only for the sake of allah comes the aspect of intention not just doing good but purely for the sake of allah 99.99% for the sake of allah 
and 0.01% for some other purpose. Allah Ta'ala does not accept that as we are told. He accepts only 100% pure deeds done only for the sake, for his sake. And only on the day of judgment, we will understand which deeds are accepted by Allah and which deeds are not. And therefore, we should be fearful even after performing deeds as to whether or not they will be acceptable to Allah Ta'ala. And we pray to Allah Ta'ala, Oh Allah, purify my intention. Purify my intention, Oh Allah. May I not be caught on the day of judgment. All my, all my actions, deeds will go in vain in that case if it is not acceptable to you. Allahumma inni auzu bika an ushrika bika an alamu astaghfiruka lima la alamu. Allahumma inni auzu bika an ushrika bika an alamu astaghfiruka lima la alamu. In a hadith, it comes if somebody who recites this every day, then Allah Ta'ala will purify his intentions. Allahumma inni auzu bika an ushrika bika an alamu astaghfiruka lima la alamu. So towards the end, what Allah Ta'ala says is, only for the sake of Allah, we, we feed you only for the sake of Allah. Whatever good deeds we do, we do for the sake of Allah. And we wish no reward, not even thanks from you. No, let him do whatever he wants to. I have done for the sake of Allah, and I will get my reward from the from Allah. And you know the problem is that we do, and we we seek from people. I'm not talking about you people, by the way. The, by and large, uh, Muslims in general or people in general, they do good and they want something in return. You will not get return from people. Allah says people are ungrateful in more than one place, in the Quran. So how can you expect from people? So if we, we do for the sake of Allah, there'll be no disappointment because he will, he will give recompense, manifold, manifold. And, and that is mentioned here. The likeness of those who spend in the, their wealth in the path of Allah is as the likeness of a grain of corn. It grows seven years. There is an error here. Seven years. And such each year has a hundred grains. Allah gives manifold increase in wealth to whom he will, wills. In one, I think it is tradition. It is mentioned that Allah uh, multiplies each virtue ten times. And up to seven hundred times. And even more than that. Depending on the purity of intention and the sacrifice we undergo. Allah gives manifold increase in wealth to whom he wills. Bighayri hisab. And he says those who spend their wealth against spending. We have seen two previous, in, in two previous verses this mention of spending. Those who spend their wealth uh, in Allah's cause by night and day in secret and open. Verily their reward is with the Rabb. And there shall be no fear to come upon them neither shall they grieve. Again, spending. By no means shall you attain, Allah says, by no means shall you attain the reality of true piety and righteousness unless you spend in Allah's cause that which you love. Now, in each of them, the, the quality of spending is mentioned and the benefits are also mentioned. The benefits are in green. In the first case, Allah says, Allah gives manifold increase in wealth. In the second case, Allah says, there'll be no fear to come upon them. Neither shall the grief. Who? Those who spend uh, in the cause of Allah. Night and day, secretly and openly. And in the third case, the reward that is mentioned is that one will attain the reality of true piety and righteousness. You know, the, the, um, one of the objectives of each of the uh, obligations towards Allah is that we gain piety, whether it is salat, whether it is uh, zak uh, hajj, whether it is fasting, whether it is zakat, we gain piety. 
our iman increases through that. So when we are praying, we should pray in such a manner with such uh, intensity of devotion, with such humility, with such uh, uh, consciousness that we are standing before Allah, with such submissiveness that each prayer increases our iman and it increases and increases and increases and we attain the level of taqwa. And there is a level as, as Tawhid mentioned last time, beyond taqwa, beyond taqwa. And this one struck me by the way. No, I, I knew about spending and the benefits of spending. This term attain, by no means shall you, by no means shall you attain the reality of true piety and righteousness unless you spend that which you love. Unless you spend that which you love in Allah's cause you spend. Try to excel one another in doing good. Deal not unjustly and you will not be dealt unjustly. The best of provisions is right conduct and to be true to every promise, be true to every promise. And then Allah Ta'ala, you know, mentions that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is an excellent example for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day. Uswatun Hasana. So just do not even cast your eyes towards worldly goods. Turn your loving attention to the believers instead. Restrain anger and forgive others. Avoid the major sins and immoralities. Do not walk through the earth exultantly. Do not be self-deluded and boastful. Be moderate in your pace. Lower your voice. Walk on the earth gently. Pardon and, and, and make reconciliation. Pardon and ask for forgiveness. Conduct your affairs by consultation. Be lenient to people so that they come to you and they are not repelled by you. Do not scoff, defame, or insult one another. Repent, seek forgiveness, avoid much suspicions. Do not spy or backbite. Uphold justice and bear witness to Allah, even if it is against yourselves, your parents, or your close relatives. And you know, in one verse, it is mentioned that justice is the foundation of Allah's creation. Justice. Refrain from following your own desire. And if I may take one extra minute on justice, you know, when we meet obligations towards Allah, that is doing justice to him and to ourselves, most importantly. If we disobey him, do not meet obligations towards him, we are being unjust, unfair to ourselves because the sin that we commit, that is unjust, injustice to ourselves. If we meet obligations towards fellow human beings, that is doing justice to them. And if we do not meet obligations to fellow human beings, we do not uh, do as we want. We do not deal with them in a manner that we want us to be dealt with. Do unto others as you want others to deal with you. If we do not do that, that will be doing injustice. Any act of disobedience to Allah, whether that order is uh, directed towards Allah or towards fellow human beings is an act of injustice. Any oppression is injustice. Any suppression, subjugation, any anything that is not sanctioned by Quran and Hadith is an injustice. So that is how I see it in simplistic terms. Justice is the creation, is the foundation of Almighty's creation. Uh, be good to uh, parents, kinsmen, orphans, needy, close neighbor, distant neighbor, companion at your side, wayfarer, and slaves. Lower to parents wings of humility, out of mercy, 
do not oppress, spend wealth in Allah's cause, spend from what you love, excel one another in doing good, deal not unjustly. What is this? Yeah, so uh, this we can deal with next time. I, I, I had hoped that uh, we can go through this list of 75 do's and don'ts in terms of excellent conduct. But we go to Tawheed, who will uh, deliberate on uh, more on Hadith number seven from the 40 Ahadith of uh, Imam Nabobi. Over to Tawheed, please. What uh, Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Uh, we continue on the Hadith. Hadith 7, I think we finished last week. If there's any question, we'll uh, deal it separately. And today I'll not take much time because we have already uh, uh, gone through a long process of discussion and we have prayed for the deceased brother, which is also a part of Ibadah. And we'll just read the Hadith number 8 today. Hadith number eight, the main discussion will differ to the next week, I think. That would be better. We don't rush, we don't put pressure on the people. Mm. Uh, right. And yeah, yeah. Okay. Bismillah rahman rahim Let me read the hadith number eight. Hadith number eight, the narrator is Abdullah ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar, we know he's the son of Umar Radi Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. We we uh, know his he also narrated other hadiths before, and we uh, discuss some of his uh, some of his characteristics. Today we will recall them again. So the hadith goes like this: that Ah uh, Nib Umaru radiyallahu anhu ma anna Rasulullahi sallallahu alaihi sallallahu alaihi wasallam call umir tu an u qatila. Umit to an ukotila nasa hatta yashadu Allah ilaha illa illa la wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah wa iuki busolata wa iutu zakata fa isa fa aluzalika ya samu mini dima ahum wa amwala hum illa bilhakil islami wa so let's read the English version of it. Umittu an u kotilu nasa. So umittu is I I was ordered. I have been ordered to fight against people. Umittu an u koti kotila nasa. So in English, I have been ordered to fight against people. Hatta yashhadu Allah ilaha illa until they testify that there is no God but Allah. Wa anna Muhammadur Rasulullah. And Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And and. zakata and until they pray until they perform prayer and pray, pray jaka jaka fa if they do so fa iza fa ilu zalika if they do so asamu minni dimaahum wa amwalahum dimalahum is blood and amwalahum is uh, uh, wealth. So if they do so, if they do so, they will have gained protection from me for their life and for their property. Illa bil hakkil, hakkil islami.
unless they in they are in accordance with Islam. Wa hisabuhum ala Allah Taala, but their hisab still rests on Allah Taala. So as long as they follow this basic thing, that is, they believe in Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they uh, establish prayer and pray jaka. Uh, they uh, they have protection from us, protection from Muslim about their blood and about their wealth. But as long as they remain in Islam, they will have protection. But still, their affair is that his their hisab would be on the Allah on Allah Taala. So this is the main uh, uh, hadith. Main hadith here. Uh, this is actually we cannot we, we don't divide it in different group. But when we study these hadith, we will study uh, some of the some of the uh, uh, human right in Islam, some of the human right in Islam, and we also had understand what is meant by jihad. And we, there is a crucial uh, word in this hadith that umit to an u kotilan nasa. I have been ordered to fight against the people. So who are the people? This is one of the controversial things. Who are the people that Rasulullah was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fight against? So this is one of the uh, issues we'll discuss in detail. Uh, do I continue today some more? I mean, why? What do you think? I think so. Little bit. Okay. Little bit. Okay, little bit. So let me try to understand first they say who are these people that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked to fight against okay there's a there's a three concept first concept that it says these are the people of Quraysh these are the people of Quraysh and and where it is supported in surah nasr that when they say that waraita nasa yadkhuluna fi dinillah and you will see that they will join in Islam in group. So this ayat is considered as a proof that these people who Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked to fight against are the Quraysh. This is one of the opinion. The other opinion refers to all people except Ahlul Kitab. So the basis of this concept is Ahlul Kitab they also in some way they are monoatheist and they follow the same belief as islamic monoatheism so according to the some of the scholars they say that ahlul kitab are not asked to fight against but all other people falls under this category but later on when the ruling of jizya came in then this concept become invalid this concept become invalid because under the ruling of Jijia, uh, all uh, uh, Ahlil Kitab also supposed to pay Jijia. The third concept about this man is talking about referring to all Muslim and non-Muslim. All Muslim and non-Muslim. Even if the Muslim, uh, uh, Muslim, uh, let's say they, they accept Islam, but then they deviate and stop paying Jaka will be asked to fight against. So we have seen that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he fought many of the Muslims after the Ufat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when uh, they denied to pay jaka. So uh, actually uh, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, for in his short um, time, he spent most of the time fighting against these people. And also, we see that after the conquest of Makkah, after the conquest of Makkah, we see that this is why they consider that this uh, fight is against all people because uh, one of the concepts is we have to establish the supremacy supremacy of Islam. That means uh, Islam must the news of Islam must reach a person, every person through dawah. So this 
uh, fight against uh, kafir or fight against opponent is also establishing the dawah because uh, if one muslim he stay in a land where there's no muslim around and the the concept of islam has been distorted in that land in that case the dawa they will go to the people will be distorted dawa and this is this distorted dawa is not uh, acceptable that is why so you must uh, fight against them as long as they stop your dawa so this the attack this uh, fighting against people is also a part of dawa All right so so uh, there is a, a one of the principles that uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam after he conquered makkah then he start uh, uh, sending messenger to the local or to the surrounding tribes or surrounding country about the islam and in that dawa he said if they don't accept this proposal then the result will be uh, war. The result will be war. So first he sent the dawa and then he attacked. He, then he uh, started his uh, military expedition in other land. And this is actually enabling the dawa to the people of the land of Kafir so that they don't get a distorted dawa of Islam. That is why the uh, many ulama say that when this in this hadith when they say that fight against the people covers everybody even muslim who are deviated from islam also can be uh, can fall under this category and this is why you see that this is why the uh, saudi arab and iran and saudi arabia they're not supposed to fight according to quran but why they fight yes because of this hadith so this is one of the hadith often very much misinterpreted and used in favor of certain gain okay this is the third so the third concept is mostly regarding dawa there's fourth concept this fourth concept is generally not discussed in many books but i just include this because i found it in some uh, some article this is based on the uh, hadith of abu huraira abu huraira that uh, Abu Huraira mentioned that by him means by Allah Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said by him in whose hand is my soul uh, whose hand my soul is surely the son of Maryam will shortly descend on the earth and he will not accept any other religion except the true religion of Allah that is Islamic monotheism so it is referring to the uh, uh, it is referring to the arrival or referring to the coming of or returning of masi isa isa alaihi salam isa alaihi salam who will uh, who will uh, oppose dajjal and this hadith is a indication uh, or it's a sign that there will be fight between Isa salam and Dajjal and this fight has been uh, validated by this hadith this, this hadith also indicate this uh, is, is applicable to the concept of uh, Islamic eschatology Islamic eschatology so there is four concept uh, here I discuss first one is only Quraysh second one is all people except Ahlul Kitab but this has been uh, abrogated by the ruling of Jizya. Th third concept, all Muslim and non-Muslim, those uh, those resist the spread of Islam or Dawa of Islam in their land. If someone resists the uh, Dawa of Islam in their land, we have to fight against them. This is one of the meaning. And last one is, uh, this is this hadith indicate that Masih uh, or Isa radiallahu anhu when he not uh, sorry Isa alayhi salam when he come to dunya and he will fight 
uh, Dajjal, he has been, his faith has been validated by this hadith. So this is the first part of the hadith. So next part, if we continue, we will try to understand the concept of uh, concept of human right in Islam. Since fight, in this hadith, the word used is qatila. Qatila is fight. Qatila is fight. But jihad is not fight. Jihad is struggle. The meaning of jihad is struggle. So there's a difference between fight and struggle. So this hadith is actually talking about fight. But there's an overall concept of jihad has been derived from this hadith. And there is a, uh, since there's a fight involved in this hadith, so uh, scholars, they derive five principles associated with Islamic ruling, Islamic ruling. And this five principles is about human rights principle. So first principle is preserve the life of life and property of Muslim. Preserve the life and property of Muslim. This is through hudud and kisas. So when you say that uh, we, we have certain ruling about protection of life, what is the ruling? Kisas, that if someone kills somebody, we can take, we can take equal, equal punishment, or, or, meaning we can kill the other guy. Only, only the family of the killed person can, uh, can uh, decide anything. Other people has no, nothing to decide. So this is actually to reduce the killing of people, to reduce, or to preserve the life. And also the hudud, it is also uh, preserving the property. So it means uh, if in Islam, if some people die in protecting his own property, he is considered as shahid. He is also considered as shahid. And this is this is the different from shahid of uh, Islamic war. Islamic war shahid is shahid in shahid in Jannah, and this shahid is shahid in dunya. Okay, so uh, the second concept of human right in uh, Islam is uh, Islam preserve the sense and consciousness, sense and consciousness through the prohibition of intoxicant. So Islam prohibit intoxicant. This is one of the reasons is he will preserve the consciousness of the or, or the or the consciousness or sanity, sanity. And uh, Islam also protect family lineage or descendant by prohibiting jina. And this is the reason why jina is prohibited. That uh, we uh, we protect family lineage. Also. Islam protect modesty and negate shamelessness through dress code or aura. We say aura. We have a minimum dress code. So I think Hamid Bhai, uh, Abdul Hamid Bhai also mentioned about this modesty. This modesty is one of the very important aspects of uh, Islam and one of the very important guidelines for Sharia. When you derive any ruling from Sharia, these are the principles that we must follow. Preserve the modesty and negate shamelessness by by prescribing dress code or aura. And number five, we protect marriage responsibility. Islam protects marriage responsibility. So there is a there is a fixed responsibility of husband over wife and responsibility of wife over husband. So that is a that is altogether is a different subject. But just for just for knowledge, but just for knowledge, there is a ten responsibility of husband over wife against only four responsibility of wife against husband. So uh, girls are very much privileged in Islamic uh, code of uh, life, Islamic code of life. All right. So our next topic will be defining jihad. Okay, when we define jihad, we, we, we must understand that our, our, how our, uh, I try to explain how our uh, scholars have defined uh, jihad. So jihad actually got four level of jihad. There's a four level of jihad. Four level of jihad, okay. The first level of jihad is, uh, is a, uh, 
internal jihad internal jihad so it is regarding knowledge regarding amal regarding dawa regarding sabar so all uh, uh, related to myself so our first level of jihad is regarding this four category and second level legal level of jihad is against iblis so that is why we study last time abdul hamid bhai also conducted a, a long uh, lectures on the waswasa on how to deal with iblis so this fighting jihad against iblis is our second level of jihad so when we do jihad we must we must uh, remember these stages that we have to do jihad on the first level first otherwise we go for second level of jihad we cannot be successful so first level is basic second level is one great up third level of jihad is against jihad against jalim jihad against jalim so uh, we must do the jihad against jalim in by using our hand or what or heart so we remember that in the last hadith we talk about uh, nasiha nasiha towards leader so we cover some part of it the jihad against jalim jalim all right so the fourth level of jihad fourth level of jihad is jihad against kafir so those who are not believer so the first condition of jihad against uh, kafir is it must be done through leadership so one leadership huh? so under acceptable leadership the leader could be either a leader of knowledge or religious leader or uh, or administrative leader both is possible so the fourth level of uh, jihad should be done under the leadership and this leadership could be either leader religious leader or administrative leader okay so until now the next subject under this hadith is quite uh, challenging i think we i i defer it for the next like week but this topic is discussing what should be about jihad now because the context has been changed during the sallallahu alaihi wasallam the uh, jihad many jihad was done by short and it was necessary during that time it was necessary during that time and uh, but the sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't do jihad on uh, on this uh, new context that we are facing now our world our world is there now there's a few characteristics going on you can see globalization you can see new technology you can see new mindset you can we can see uh, like we have changing of values changing of lifestyle these are the changes occurring in our uh, new society you know new society so the jihad is different now it's not the jihad with uh, with shore or jihad with uh, uh with a uh, with a violent jihad violent jihad will not bring any result but rather it will bring negative result so our last topic is on this issue actually on this issue that we want to say that our young muslim our young muslim is not attached to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam our young muslims are not attached to sahabi our young muslim are even not attached to even uh, uh, scholars because our scholars have a different mindset and they are not you know most of the young muslims are not attached to islamic scholars and even our young muslims are not uh, they are not familiar with arabic whereas the majority of the text majority of islamic texts are still in arabic so how do you expect that our uh, young muslim generation will uh, will uh, uh, come under islamic understanding they will not develop so this is a, this is a concept of this is actually a uh, you know uh, how to say that they we, if we study more detail we will see that our young uh, young muslim young muslim are attached to who they are attached to uh, pop star they are attached to sports celebrity 
they are attached to media celebrity. Even they are attached to, uh, they are attached to Bill Gates, they are attached to Mark Zuckerberg, they are attached to Steve, huh? Steve Jobs, they are attached to Steve Jobs. So when they are idle are those people, slowly uh, their mindset changes. They, they, they develop new mindset. They develop new mindset. And some of the wrong thing, some of the evil thing, evil person, all these things changes to them. And it becomes acceptable to them. It slowly becomes acceptable to them. And they slowly, gradually push away from Islamic uh, knowledge or Islamic concept or Islamic values or Islamic moral. So we are losing them. We are losing them. That is why we see this. There's one of the ayat that says the Surah Surah Baqarah, the Watasimu bi hablillahi jamia wala tafardu. So hold on the hold on the rope of uh, all together. Hold on the rope of Allah together and do not get divided. Not to get divided. This instruction is given by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. 15 years, 15,000, uh, 1,500 years before. Just keeping mind in this, that this situation will come out. If we are divided, we are not attached, we are not in a, we are not in a group, our young Muslim will be, uh, will be, they will be uh, moving away from us. This is, this concept is given by one of the uh, Westerner thinker. Eh? It's a, this concept is given by, Cognitive behavioral theory. We say co cognitive behavioral theory, uh, and this concept is good. One of the pioneers in this work is uh, Aaron Beck. Aaron Beck, and he cre he created this concept in 1960. 1960. That this this uh, he the basic thing is, I want I want to change some action of a people. So don't change the action first. Change his uh, thinking process. Uh, modify his thinking process. So if we see our world today, our uh, due to globalization, due to modernization, due to uh, lifestyle change, and uh, we are we are we are uh, attached to advertisement, lot of advertisement type of thing. One of the thing is advertisement. The internet. Our people are all addicted. Our young generation are all addicted to internet, and. The first thing they are attached to are all ad. Who conduct the ad? All their, it is all their uh, celebrities. Because it's a, they are sports celebrity, they are, uh, they are uh, media celebrity, uh, are paid heavily to conduct ad. Why? Because that creates an impact on the young Muslims or young generation. And young generation, uh, start accepting what they used to do. Uh, they start accepting this all these uh, concepts inside their mind. So our jihad, our concept of jihad will be based on this issue. We have to uh, stay together. We have to uh, we have to uh, present our resource. We have to present our culture. We have to present our values to our young generation. If we don't do that, if we cannot do that, we will lose. We will lose to the uh, uh, kafir or non-believer. Uh, we will lose our next generation uh, from this path. Uh, we, can, we can try to do whatever we want to do, but we, we will not be in the right path. And uh, in general, in general, uh, our Islamic, uh, Islamic, Ummah will slowly slip away, slip away towards the main course, from the main course, from the main course. So this is the concept of the hadith that. So basically these hadith say that, uh, basically these hadith say that, uh, that uh, those who follow uh, uh, those who believe in Allah, the Subhanahu uh, 
they uh, accept this salah and pay jaka they are the people you cannot fight with them but they are uh, what to say, how to say uh, they are still under the uh, under the authority of allah's wish whether they will be successful or not the last line say and their reckoning will be with allah the, the almighty so from this hadith the concept of jihad the concept of jihad that i talk today not many of the uh, islamic scholars will talk in the same way they will talk in a different way but this is one of the book that uh, i forwarded in the whatsapp group it mentioned about this and i added some extra uh, material from other resources in it even our madrasa when we really learn this hadith they do not teach in this way but that's why i add the last part i add a bit from different resources so more or less that is the hadith we describe today hopefully uh, we got some wisdom from this hadith and this hadith you can we can discuss many things it's not that i'm not a, I'm, I'm basically i'm not a qualified teacher so if you ask question maybe i cannot immediately answer so uh, let's discuss and make our concept clear so that we can really work on it in future we have to work together not individually i cannot do anything about this hadith uh, so i stop here and open the floor for questioning and answer subhanaka wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik so uh, comes the part of uh, dua may allah taala grant recovery protection and blessing on the mother of jenif from 20th batch she has been in in uh, ventilation for uh, i think uh, two to three weeks now two to three weeks jenif went to bangladesh came back is through uh, tremendous uh, mental strain uh, and and by the way you know our prayers will not go in vain whatever allah wills will happen nobody can stop that but our prayers will elevate her status or anybody in her position and uh, we pray for uh, barkat who's fighting cancer needs bone marrow transplant he's from sixth batch and everybody who's sick and by the way i should have given a in the beginning uh, a a message saying that uh, if there is anybody for whom we need to pray uh, please uh, send me a message okay here we have a message from uh, topu uh, my fupa ayyaba sanam fupu last one to leave this world amongst my dad siblings passed away on friday on friday she is very blessed it is friday at 9:30 pm bangladesh time due to old age complications she was 92 inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun please include her in our dua so um begum tayyaba sanam you know anybody who passes away i may not know the person but the thought that comes to me is now the person cannot do any good deed now comes the time of hisab hisab and we will all meet the same fate none of us lived 100 years ago none of us will possibly live 100 years from today and if there was no hisab there was no worry but there is hisab what allah says is haq what his nabi said is haq and that is going to happen so it brings to me that thought that 
in this case, it is 92 years. That, that long period is over. No more good deeds, except for, you know, uh, if somebody has done Sadhka Zariya or taught somebody, gave Dawat and uh, left uh, uh, righteous children, you know, people who will act based on our, our uh, reaching out to them, connecting them with the creator, you know, that will bring good uh, rewards for us. But otherwise, you know, that age is gone, that life is gone forever. So, and, and uh, Mukul's course mate, Mukul meaning ambassador, uh, Major General Jahangir's course mate, uh, Major Mahmood, retired obviously, died yesterday in New York City. He was in, uh, he was in uh, ventilation for two or I think three weeks. Uh, his lungs collapsed and another life gone. In this way, you know, every day, 160,000 people pass away. How many go away? I and mean, we have to die. That's, that's, that nobody can contest that. But the point, the, the major point is how many of us go with Iman? That is what moves me. How many of us go with Iman? The requisite level of Iman, not the level of Iman that we think is is enough, the, the requisite level in the esteem of the Almighty. And finally, uh, we pray for our brother, Ali Hamid Khan, who passed away, uh, I think two days ago, from fifth batch. He suffered from cancer. We didn't know. He passed away quietly without bothering any of us. May Allah Ta'ala grant Jannatul Firdos to all of them. Make their grave the garden of Jannatul Firdos. We recite Surah Fatiha once and Kulhu Allah three times. Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Hamidin. Iyaka Nabuli wa Iyaka Nastain. Hithina Sirat al-Mustaqim. Sirat al-Lazina Namta alayhim. Bagharil Maktubi alayhim. Walad Tolleen. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Kulhu Allahu Ahad. Allahu Samad. Lam Yalit. Falam Yulad. Falam Yakullahu Kufan Ahad. Allahu <laughs> اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت عليك توكلت وأنت رب العرش الكريم ما شاء الله كان وما لم يشاء لم يكون ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أعلم وأن الله على كل شيء قدير وأن الله قد أحط بكل شيء إلما اللهم إني أعوذ بك من شر النفس ومن شر كل دابة أنت أخذ بنا سياتيها إن ربي على سيرات المستقيم لا إله إلا الله الحليم الكريم سبحان الله رب العرش العظيم والحمد لله رب العالمين أسألك موجبات رحمتك وزائم مغفرتك وغنيمة من كل بر وسلامة من كل اسم لا تدالنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا همما إلا فرشته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا دينا إلا كزيته ولا مجاهدا إلا نصرته ولا مظلوما إلا نصرته ولا مسلما إلا رحمته ولا Hajatam Yala Karizanilla Kazaitaha Yarhama Rahimin Yarhama Rahimin Yarhama Rahimin Allahuma Saluka Min Khere Masala Kamin Hunabiuka Muhammad Salalala Salama Nauzumi Kamin Share Mastaza Kamin Hunabiuka Muhammad Salalala Salaman Talmustan Walekal Balag Wala Hawla Wala Kuata Ila Bidla Hila Lila Zim Allahuma Kfidli Mata Muhammad Salalala Salama Allahuma Rahamu Mata Muhammad Salalala Salam Allahuma Fazu Mata Muhammad Salalala Salama Allahuma Ahdi Mata Muhammad Salalala Salama Allahuma Ahdina Wa Ahdibina Wa Ahdina Sayyamiya 
اللهم اغفر لي ولوالدنا وجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الله يا الله يا امينهم والاموات انك مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والله يا پروردگار يا رب الرحيم يا مالك الملك يا ذو الجلال والاكرام يا عزيز الجبار المتكبر يا خالق الباري المصور انت ولي في الدنيا والاخره يا فاتر السماوات والارض انت ولي في الدنيا والاخره ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وزورياتنا قرة عيون وجعلنا للمتكين إمام رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن زوريتي ربنا تقبل دعاء والله تمي عشش مهربان نحو لأمرة مشامنة كيف بحات مرحي الله কিভাবে তোমার নাম ধরে ডাকি আল্লাহ তুমি মেহরবান না হলে তো আমরা যোগ্য না তোমার সামনে হাত উঠানো তোমাকে তোমাকে ডাকা তোমার সামনে দাঁড়ানো তোমার সামনে কোনো ইবাদত করা তুমি আমাদের উপর অশেষ মেহরবানি করেছো আল্লাহ তোমার বিশেষ সর্বশ্রেষ্ঠ নবীর উম্মত করে আল্লাহ কিন্তু আমরা সেই মর্যাদা বুঝি নাই আল্লাহ যে মর্তবা রাখতে পারি নাই আল্লাহ দিতে পারি নাই আল্লাহ মর্যাদা দিতে পারি নাই আল্লাহ গোনার পর গোনা করে গিয়েছি আল্লাহ তারপরে তুমি আমাদেরকে তফিক দিয়েছো আল্লাহ সময়ের পর সময় অবহেলায় কাটিয়েছি আল্লাহ তারপরে তুমি তফিক দিয়েছো আল্লাহ লক্ষ লক্ষ মানুষ তোমাকে না চিনে না জেনে দুনিয়া থেকে চলে যাচ্ছে আমরা বেখে আল আল্লাহ আমরা আমাদের জীবন নিয়ে মত্ত আল্লাহ এত বড় জুর্মে আজিমের পরেও তুমি আমাদের তৌফিক দিয়েছো আল্লাহ আমাদেরকে শ্রেষ্ঠ উন্মত করেছো কিন্তু শ্রেষ্ঠ উন্মতের কাজ আমরা করতে পারি নাই তারপরে আমাদের তৌফিক দিয়েছো আল্লাহ তোমার তোমার হাবিবকে আমরা দুঃখ দিয়েছি আল্লাহ তিনি কত দুঃখ করে দুঃখ পেয়ে গিয়েছেন দিন পৌঁছানোর জন্য মানুষকে যার ফলে আমাদের পর্যন্ত আমাদের কাছে পর্যন্ত দিন এসছে সাড়ে চোদ্দশো বছর পরে এত কষ্ট করেছেন উনি এবং ওনার সাহাবারা কিন্তু আমরা সেটা বুঝতে পারিনি আল্লাহ আমরা সামান্য কষ্ট করতে যাই নাই আল্লাহ নিজের আমলই ঠিক মতো করি না আল্লাহ অন্যদের কি করবো আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে শুধরে নাও আল্লাহ আমাদেরকে আপন করে নাও আল্লাহ আমাদের ইমান বাড়িয়ে দাও আল্লাহ আমল সুন্দর করে দাও আল্লাহ প্রতিটা দিন প্রতিটা দিন ইমান যাতে বাড়তে থাকে আমল যাতে সুন্দর হতে থাকে তোমার যে উদ্দেশ্যে তুমি আমাদেরকে সৃষ্টি করেছো সেই উদ্দেশ্য আমরা সাধন করতে পারি যে উদ্দেশ্যে তুমি আমাদেরকে মুসলমান হিসাবে পাঠিয়েছো পাঠিয়েছো আল্লাহ সেই উদ্দেশ্য যাতে আমরা সাধন করতে পারি আল্লাহ তোমার প্রতি দায়ী দায়িত্ব পরিপূর্ণ ভাবে পালন করতে পারি সেই তৌফিক দান করো আল্লাহ তোমার বান্দার প্রতি দায়ী দায়িত্ব পরিপূর্ণ ভাবে পালন করতে পারি সেই তৌফিক দান করো আল্লাহ তাদের কাছে তোমার বাণী পৌঁছে দিতে পারি সেই তৌফিক দান করো আল্লাহ আল্লাহ কত কত দায়ী দায়িত্ব পালন করি নাই আঘাত করেছি অন্যায় করেছি তোমার বান্দার প্রতি আল্লাহ তোমার তরফ থেকে তুমি এবং সামনের গোনা আল্লাহ এবং আমরা আশা করতে পারি তুমি মাফ করবে আল্লাহ কিন্তু তুমি যদি তাদের খুশি করে না দাও আল্লাহ তারা তো মাফ করবে না আল্লাহ আল্লাহ আমাদেরকে তুমি আপন করে নাও আমাদেরকে শয়তানের থেকে শয়তানের ধোকার থেকে নফসের তারণার থেকে দুনিয়ার চাকচিকের থেকে প্রতিটা মুহূর্তে আল্লাহ রক্ষা করো আমাদের সেই শক্তি শক্তি নাই ক্ষমতা নাই আল্লাহ সেই ইচ্ছা পর্যন্ত নাই আল্লাহ সেই ইচ্ছাটা জাগিয়ে দাও যাতে করে এইসব শক্তি থেকে আমরা আমরা বাঁচতে পারি তোমার ছায়াতলে থেকে আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তাহলে এক মুহূর্তের জন্য আমাদের বাঁচার ক্ষমতা নাই আল্লাহ 
অত্যন্ত দুর্বল গোনাগার খাতাকার সিয়াকার আমরা ভিক্ষার ঝুলি নিয়ে তোমার কাছে হাত উঠিয়েছি আল্লাহ আমাদের ঝুলি খালি ফিরিয়ে দিও না আল্লাহ প্রতিটা মুহূর্তে হাত ধরে আমাদেরকে কবরের পর্যন্ত নিয়ে যেও আল্লাহ তোমার সন্তুষ্টি যাতে অর্জন করতে পারি তোমার ভালোবাসার সহ যাতে আমল করতে পারি তোমার হাবিবের ভালোবাসা সহ যাতে আমল করতে পারি হুসনে আখলাক দান করো আল্লাহ তোমার হাবিবের গুণাবলীর অশেষ গুণাবলীর ছিটে ফোটা আমাদের দান করো আল্লাহ যাতে আমরাও ধন্য হয়ে যাই আল্লাহ তোমার সন্তুষ্টি আমরা পেয়ে যাই আল্লাহ এবং শয়তানের শেষ চেষ্টা ব্যর্থ করে দিয়ে আমাদেরকে কলেমা সহ তোমার সন্তুষ্টি সহ পৃথিবী থেকে নিয়ে যেও আল্লাহ যাতে তোমার সর্বোত্তম ব্যবহার শুধু দুনিয়াতে না কবরে পেতে পারি হাসরের ময়দানে পেতে পারি পুলসিরাত পার হতে পেতে পারি বিদ্যুতের গতিতে এবং বিনা হিসাবে জানাতুল ফের দোষে দাখিল হতে পারি আল্লাহ আমরা যা কিছু আমল করেছি আল্লাহ ব্যক্তিগত ভাবে সমষ্টিগত ভাবে যা কিছু বলেছি এবং এবং শুনেছি তার ভুল ভ্রান্তি সংশোধন করে তোমার শাহী দরবারে কবুল করে রসিল্লা করিম সাল্লামের দরবারে ওনার রোজা মুবারকে পৌঁছে দিও আল্লাহ এবং তার সবা পৌঁছে দিও আমাদের ফুকুর কাছে আমাদের ভাই আলী আলী হামিদ আলী হামিদের খানের কাছে আল্লাহ এবং মেজর মাহমুদের কাছে পৌঁছে দিও আল্লাহ তোমার কাছে গেলে তো কেউ মেজরও না মেজর জেনারেলও না আর মন্ত্রীও না আর বাদশাহও না কিছুই না আল্লাহ মাহমুদের কাছে পৌঁছে দিও আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ এবং এবং আমাদের যত ভাই কলেজের সাথে জড়িত যত শিক্ষক প্রিন্সিপাল ভাইস প্রিন্সিপাল অ্যাডজুটেন্ট স্টাফ কলেজের সাথে জড়িত তোমার 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 হাওয়ালে আছে আল্লাহ সবার কাছে পৌঁছে দিও আল্লাহ এবং আমাদের মাতা পিতা বা নিকট আত্মীয় স্বজন প্রিয়জন আপনজন যারা তোমার কাছে আমাদের দাদা দাদি নানা নানি চাচা চাচি ফুপা ফুপু খালা খালু মামা মামি আত্মীয় স্বজন বন্ধু বান্ধব শিক্ষক শিক্ষত্রী পাড়া প্রতিবেশী যারা তোমার কাছে তথা সমস্ত মুসলমানের কাছে পৌঁছে দিও যারা তোমার হাওয়ালাই আল্লাহ তাদের কবর কবর আজাব মাফ করে দিও আল্লাহ কবর প্রশস্ত করে দিও নূর দিয়ে পরিপূর্ণ করে দিও কবরকে জান্নাতুল ফেরদোসের বাগান বানিয়ে দিও প্রতিটা দিন তাদের দরজা উঁচু করে দিও আল্লাহ তুমি তুমি মেহরবান তুমি পরম মেহরবান করুণাময় আল্লাহ দয়ালু আল্লাহ তুমি তাদের দরজা উঁচু করে দিও কেমতের দিন আর সে নিচে ছায়া দিও আল্লাহ আমার নামার ডান হাতে দিও আল্লাহ এবং নিশ্চিন্ত মনে রেখো সেই ভয়ঙ্কর দিনে আল্লাহ এবং সেই ভয়াবহ তুলসি রাত পার হতে বিদ্যুতের গতিতে তুমি তাদেরকে পার করে দিও আল্লাহ এবং বিনা হিসাবে আল্লাহ তুলফের দোষের দাখিল করো আল্লাহ যাতে আমরা সবাই সবাই একত্রে বাস করতে পারি আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তোমার হাবিবের সান্নিধ্যে আল্লাহ এবং তোমার ছায়া তলে আল্লাহ আমরা বিভিন্ন লেখা যাতে হাত উঠিয়েছি আল্লাহ আমাদের হাত খালি ফিরিয়ে দিও না আল্লাহ যদি কোনো কিছু পৃথিবীতে ক্ষতিকর হয় তার বদলা আঘেরাতে দিও আল্লাহ আমরা বিভিন্ন বিপদ আপদে হাত উঠিয়েছি বিভিন্ন অসুখ বিসুখে হাত উঠিয়েছি আমাদের নিজেদের বা আমাদের সন্তান সন্ততির বা আমাদের আত্মীয় স্বজনের আমাদের পাড়া প্রতিবেশীর আমাদের দেশবাসীর আমাদের বিশ্ববাসীর সমস্ত বিপদ আপদ তুমি নিমিষে দূর করে দিতে পারো আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে রক্ষা করো আল্লাহ হেফাজত করো হেদায়ত করো রহমত করো মাগফেরাত করো আল্লাহ সমস্ত মুসলমানকে মাগফেরাত করো সমস্ত মানুষকে হেদায়ত করো আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ কত মানুষ কত মানুষ অন্ন হারা বস্ত্র হারা গৃহ হারা দিশা হারা পথ হারা কন্যা দায়গ্রস্ত রোগগ্রস্ত ঋণগ্রস্ত অভাবগ্রস্ত আল্লাহ একমাত্র তুমি তাদের প্রয়োজন মিটাতে পারো আল্লাহ তুমি তাদের সমস্যার সমাধান করতে পারো আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে আপন করে নিও আল্লাহ আমি আমরা তোমার তোমার কাছে শান তোমার শান মতো চাইতে পারলাম না আল্লাহ কখনোই পারবো না আল্লাহ তোমার শান মতো দান করো আল্লাহ তোমার শান মতো হেফাজত চাইতে পারলাম না কখনোই পারবো না তোমার শান মতো হেফাজত করো আল্লাহ আল্লাহ
ربنا تقبل مني انك انت السميع العليم ربنا تقبل مني انك انت السميع العليم ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وحب لا اله الا الله وحب لا اله الا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اننا كنا من الظالمين امين يا رب العالمين امين يا رب العالمين امين يا رب العالمين اللهم امين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ان شاء الله امرأة ملي تو هبو সামনে রব্বারে আল্লাহ তাআলা তৌফিক দিলে একে অপরকে আমরা শরণ করাই যাতে করে আমরা তৌফিক পাই আল্লাহ তাআলার কাছ থেকে নিজেরা যোগদান করার